Mike Semper, VV, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Well, we had this dynamite show. It was dynamite. We had Penton Jay White in the opener, which was a very good match. And uh, I love Jay White. He's the best heel. They have this this striking battle, and Penta's just killing this guy. And so Jay White complains, well, you got a singlet on. Why don't you take that off? So Penta takes a singlet off, and he still kills Jay White with chops. Did not help Jay White one bit. So they hit all these big moves there at the end. And then, like, here's my compl- here's my criticism of AEW lately. I'm sick of these matches that are awesome, and then they have absolutely the lamest finish. They're having this great match. And then all of a sudden, guns take the ref, juice punches Penta, he gets pinned. That's it. And uh, they did the exact same thing in that Brian Danielson-Christian match. It was like, we watched 25 minutes of great action. And it wasn't even like, no, don't say WWE does that too. No, they do not. They do distraction finishes. But of late, they're like, there's a bit of at least complexity to it. Where, you know, somebody tries to interfere, but then, you know, it's he's cut off, and then someone else, it's whatever. It's like, at least give me something. It's like, there's nothing lamer than, you go 25 minutes or whatever, and distraction, hit him with a move, finish him. It's just like, I need I need something more at this point. It's too I'll give, I'll give you something Too lamer. generic. Chop battles which go too long, which have too much other stuff into them. Like, you know, the chop battle can be a good thing. I have no problem with the back and forth like a lot of people do. But there was one point when he's taken off the glove and Jay White is just sitting there like this. And it just it gets to a point where I can take a little of that, but then it goes for too long and it takes me out of it. And that's what the issue I had with leading into that chop battle, which was it was ridiculous. I guess people liked it, but it was too much for me. Now we had a Jay White promo afterwards. He's still waiting for Max to enter his eight man, answer his eight-man tag challenge. And then Juice cuts a promo. He's going to win the Battle Royal. He's going to win the ring next week. And then they're going to pawn it so he can buy another gold tooth. It's a TJ Maxx champ. He needs to buy that gold tooth for poor Nick Wayne. That's what he needs to do. <laughs> then we had Renee with uh, MJF. And MJF does his promo about how he prays to God that Juice wins. He's not mentioning the quarters, but he's threatening to kill the guy. And then up walks uh, Caster and the Acclaimed. And Max wants to offer the team to MJF for the eight-man. MJF says no. And then Caster, bad line again. He says, I'm going to enter the Battle Royale tonight, win, and then I'm going to beat you for the ring, so you got to put the ring on my finger. And now Max is furious, and he storms off, and Billy... He's upset at Caster for saying something stupid. And then he goes, that guy is a scumbag. And Caster says, yes, but he's my scumbag. And they drag him off screen. Hikarshi to Emi Sakura, excellent match. They beat the crap out of each other, especially the finish when she did as her spinning knee. And, man, she hit this poor lady right in the face. Just killed her. And uh, this was a uh, championship contender match or whatever they call it. But uh, Emi didn't win, so... But I enjoyed this. It was a good match. All right. Adam Copeland promo, which we talked about earlier, he literally explained everything he's going to do in AEW. He's going to do a bunch of matches. Christian's going to remain a heel. Then one day, Christian's going to get screwed. He's going to be rock bottom. Edge will lift him up, and they will team together for a final run. That's what's going on. <laughs> Wardlow versus Ryan Nemeth. Wardlow kills him. And uh, if you haven't figured this out, his wrist tape? if you're dumb... Wardlow is going heel. He hit one power bomb. The fans wanted more. He did not give them more. The referee stopped the match. And then Chavani goes to interview him. He says, what's next? And he holds up the armbands. It says MJF. Not written very well. It's kind of awkward there. And then the key is he shoulder checks the beloved Tony Chavani, And he gets booed on the way out. Because MJF is a babyface. This guy needs to be a heel. That's the story. Had a Kenny Omega promo. This is where we had the 13 days line. So it looks like they may be squaring off for the title in uh, 12 days now on Collision. Then it's back to Roddy's house. Roddy, he's putting poor Cole to work. The worst. This is the 
absolute dirt worse. This is lower than wrestle crap level. Please make it stop. Please. It's embarrassing. Brother, I've seen a lot of wrestle crap, dude. And, and I'm not you gonna, know what? This I'm is not part of say it, Brian. Don't defend it. This don't is great it. at all. It I'm sucks. not going to say this is great at all, but sucks. don't compare this to that Hermie Sadler match I had to watch on TNA on Tuesday. But uh, you guys... Bro, it was one dude, match. This is four weeks of crap. There's with no people. way I watched the that Hermie Sadler match. The stupidest characters in the world. There's no way I watched that when it happened because I would not be famous for that Charmel and uh, Jenna uh, Maraska match. Jenna Maraska. I'd be famous for this one, dude. This God, God, it was can't even one say it. Match. This is week after atrocity. week after week of the most atrocity. brain dead, stupid one-dimensional characters who are like children. No. I don't know if I'd say they're one-dimensional. But anyway, Cole's walked out on him. He's had enough. He's going to get <laughs> surgery. And then Roddy concludes, I know what I need to do to get my friend back. I need to be nice to that scumbag. So apparently he's going to help him win a big match. Guess we'll see which one that is. Then we had Tony introducing Don Callis. And uh, he introduced Hobbs. Talks about how Hobbs killed Jericho. And Hobbs cut this awesome promo because all great promos are built around something that really happened to you. And uh, and this one was Will Hobbs saying, on February 22nd, 1998, it was supposed to be the best day of my life. I had the chance to meet my hero, Chris Jericho. My grandmother, who raised me, the big mama, she got me front row tickets to meet Chris Jericho, and what did he do? He walked past that old lady. He told her to shut up, and he told me to sit my ass down. So for 25 years, I have held on to this frustration, and I swore the day I got the chance to look him in the eye, I was going to hurt him over and over, and man, I did. I picked him up, and I spine-busted him over and over again, and I loved every second of it. And I was like, golly! Finally, we're doing it with Hobbs. This guy's About great. Time. I can understand that, too. On February 19th, 1995, I was told by Booker T, shut up, sit down, white boy. We don't need your support. I sat down, but I continued to support, especially because they were facing the Nasty Boys. Never liked them. Well, uh, this is all true. It was a WCW show, and uh, Jericho and Hoovy was on the show, and he was there in the front row, and it all happened. I don't think that he was this angry back then, but uh, he turned into a, a hell of a promo. So then uh, Callis buries Kyle Fletcher for sucking and screwing up for the family, and Fletcher comes out and gets in his face, and essentially Don says, you beat uh, you beat old Kenny Omega tonight, and uh, we'll talk. So he did not beat Kenny Omega, but this match was so great. It was so great. And Kenny Omega, you know, people of Kenny Omega is like, to me, is always great. But, you know, there's always the people that are like, well, it's not the New Japan Kenny. Well, brother, this was the New Japan Kenny. Golly. I watched this match and I was like, brother, this, you got to. This gotta, was a healthy Kenny. That's what it was more you than gotta anything. You got to back off a little, like. dude. Like, stop being the New Japan Kenny in a TV match. <laughs> Save that for pay per view, bro. But, man, they did everything. And Kenny hit him with the one-winged angel and pinned him. At which point, Callis buried Fletcher and told him to quit the business, kid. Get a nine-to-five. You suck. He's a ham and egger now. But, God. but he's not because it was awesome. And, you know, Kenny Omega knows Kyle Fletcher needed that. And I thought he did a good job on the mic bucking up to Don Callis beforehand. I thought in the match it was pretty spectacular. I thought it was great. So... Again, good things on the way for Kyle Fletcher as a part of Aussie Open, and then maybe as a single if he can get more comfortable on the mic. And we had the uh, murder hawk monster, murder hawked Barrett Brown. Killed this bloke. Welcome to Texas, kid. Sucks to be him. Swerve's video premieres Friday, and he should be excited, but he's not because Hangman cost him the TNT title, and now it's personal. And it's not always you, he says that pays for your actions, Hangman. So he's going to go after one of Hangman's friends, family, etc. can't wait for the Christmas show when you get all absinthe up and start doing the Prince Nana dance. Sting came out and cut a promo. And, uh, you know, a guy yesterday goes, he texted, he said, you think that Sting's going to retire tonight? And I ridiculed this person. And uh, I, will give a, I will give a halfway apology <laughs> because what I, what I thought he meant 
was that Sting would come out and say, I'm retiring. You will never see me wrestle again, which I knew was not going to happen in this town. But he did say, (laughs) I will be retiring. He is going to retire at Revolution. And uh, that'll be in February or March of 2024. So he's got six months or whatever left. And uh, he did the big thank you and talked about his career and said, this one, it's going to be for sure. So uh, who will be his final opponent? What uh, what will the match be? Can it be Mudo? Way to bury the town. One more time? I'm not burying the town, dude. Yes, you have. I think you, you brother. You, is this subconscious there, with this, Peter Rosenberg? This you just is don't like Sting. Rosenberg, Texas. You realize this is Sting, okay? Sting. This is Sting. He is not coming out in Rosenberg, Texas, and saying, you know what? It's been real, everybody. I'm out of here for a career. He's not gonna. He won't. Why not? You it's not going to happen. You don't know that. Maybe he had a great relationship no, you know how I know with, it? with Paul you know Boss in Houston. It? When he's I'll tell you how I know it, you nerd. Because he was in Rosenberg, Texas last night, and he didn't retire. <laughs> he said, I'm going to retire at Revolution. A pay-per-view, a big show with a big match. I hope it comes back. I hope it's in Rosenberg. I was not wrong. <laughs> if anything, I was right. Revolution in Rosenberg, Texas. Let's go. No. Then Nick oh, I'm Wayne. sorry, I'm sorry, Houston. I'll tell you it's what Houston. I was wrong about. I'll tell you what I was wrong about. I guaranteed that they would give Nick Wayne's mother a name. <laughs> they did a whole sit-down interview with her and Nick, and they never gave her a name. Lady. She is Nick Wayne's mother. That's your mother. So they have a thing back and forth, and finally he starts screaming at her, and she slaps him across the face, and he says, you're dead to me, and he leaves with Christian. She's in tears. And then the real tears came because a brawl breaks out. Darby shows up. He makes his return. He attacks, which, by the way, I guess his elbow's fine, thank God. And he attacks Luchasaurus. He attacks Nick. And somewhere in this melee, Nick went face first into the cement, and he chipped his front tooth. He's bleeding all over the place. And last night, the belief was that he chipped it all the way down to the nerve, but he did not. But it's still, like, chipped completely in half. And, uh, yeah, that's didn't sucked. sound like you said chip right there, but uh, it chipped. It was chipped. And then he was so awesome because, man, I chipped my teeth on cement. I'm mad, but like he's totally in character. He's like, Christian, my tooth. Because he's, all crying right, he's his a dad. better worker than you ever were. That's why. Well, he is, but like I was second best guy <laughs> that, that Buddy ever trained. But anyway, uh, they had a great brawl. And now they can do that tag match. We kept asking, like, why is Nick not in these tag matches? Well, he is now. Then the main event was a Dynamite Dozen Battle Royal. Juice, Max Caster, Matt Hardy, Jake Hager, Trent, Daniel Garcia, Matt Menard, Jeff Hardy, Dustin Rhodes, Commander, Johnny TB, and Matt Seidel. And uh, comes down to the two people that, you know, one of them MGF wants to kill, one of them he wants nothing to do with. It is uh, it is Juice and Max Caster. Jay White attacks MGF at commentary. They brawl. MGF briefly gets the belt. Jay Low blows him to get it back. Caster is distracted. Juice hits him with the ring, tosses him out, wins. So it is MJF and Juice for the ring next week. And uh, I could be wrong, but I think MJF is almost going to get this belt. Almost get this belt. Almost get this belt. But he ain't going to get it before the pay-per-view. And then he will beat Jay White, get his belt back. and Onward we go. Back in a moment, Observer Live. We had some neighbors. They had a little horse. One day the horse disappeared and we didn't know if they sold it or ate it. I think it was aided. I used to go over there and spend the night with the girls. I was quite a bit. Did you ever eat dinner there? No. The girls, the twins, they met they met this father and son. Oh no. One of them married the father and the other married the son. Can you imagine how different ways they were related? The the I, I actually can't. That was a weird bunch. The dad was a uh, stepdad to the girls, and they got, got kind of familiar once in a while. <laughs> what? Move on. <laughs> go. Don't. Just go. He's was having a cow, town too. not inbred? <laughs> anyway, we used to have to churn butter. Are you having fun with me? I don't know. I honestly don't know. <laughs> hey, guys. Did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.